Hi everyone, my name is Kyle Gallatin. I'm a machine learning engineer, and this is the video version of my Towards Data Science article. NVIDIA gave me a $15,000 data science workstation. Here's what I did with it. Now the topic of this article is creating a GPU accelerated PubMed search engine. So you can view the full article for all the details. This is a notebook adaptation that I'm gonna walk you through today with some toy data to give an example of how this code actually looks when it runs. Now I'm running this off of an actual data science workstation, but there are instructions in the GitHub repo associated with this notebook that will give you instructions on how to set up your environment and all that kind of stuff. Cool. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna get started here, is to actually download and process some PubMed data. So PubMed data basically comes in this big format up here where we have um, a bunch of gzip files. There's about a thousand of them. The total unzip size is about 300 gigabytes. And all we're gonna do right now is just use this cell to download one file and unzip it so we can play with it for the purposes of this tutorial. Now we just need to take that XML and actually parse it to a more usable format like a CSV using things like beautiful soup and pandas. So the first thing we're gonna do is just to find some helpful functions here that'll help us take the actual XML and get the fields that we need. And then we're gonna run it, and I'm gonna show you an example of what one of the PubMed article XML objects looks like. While today we're just using these two fields here, um, abstract text and year, as an example of the things that you can pull out from all of the metadata here, there are there's a ton of other stuff available within PubMed that you could use for all kinds of experimentation, and open source data science stuff. Cool. So here we can see this is one PubMed article object, and there's a ton of other metadata associated with it. Besides the year, we have a lot of other data information. There's stuff on the journal, there's stuff on the title, of course, um, authors, affiliations, etc. A bunch of other stuff that we won't use today, but are good to know that you can extract from each and every article, should you, should you so choose. So let's take that, let's get it into an actual data frame kind of format so you can see what's up here. So now we'll have the abstract text in one column, year in another, and we'll write this to disk so we can play with it. Cool. So now we have the data that we can use for the purposes of this project. So moving on to the actual topics of the article itself. For those of you that read the article, you saw that one of the issues I faced when I was working with um, the PubMed data to create this search engine was that the data itself was just massive. You know, it's 300 gigabytes unzipped, that's a ton to work with there, and not all of us have 20 node Elasticsearch, Spark clusters, etc. at our disposal to work with. So I wanted to see if I could use two cool libraries and frameworks um, to kind of recreate that same thing. Namely, use NVIDIA Rapids and Dask. Now, Dask is a cool parallel processing library coming out of NVIDIA, and NVIDIA Rapids is a cool set of tools meant to mimic popular packages in base Python, like, um, well not base Python, but you know, Python, like scikit-learn and pandas. Specifically QML is very, very similar to scikit-learn, and QDF is very, very similar to pandas. And we can use these to take full advantage of the same kinds of transformations and methods that we have in you know, our other familiar libraries, like pandas and scikit-learn, but take advantage of the actual hardware acceleration of GPUs. So the first thing we're just gonna do is read in the data. We can check out how our GPUs are doing using NVIDIA SMI. So this will show us the GPUs we have, the amount of memory they're taking up, et cetera, and any running processes we have. What I'm gonna do here is use Dask to create a local CUDA cluster, and I'm gonna use Dask QDF to read in all the CSVs um, using this wildcard, all the CSVs in our data directory. Right now, there is only one CSV that matches, However, note there are plenty more, you know, if you direct this to any other directory that has a bunch of CSVs in it, all of them will be read in. So I'm just gonna run this, it's gonna start the cluster, and then we're gonna get a nice little print statement showing me that I read, you know, this many abstracts in this many seconds. So pretty cool. It may not look like much happened there, but if we check NVIDIA SMI again, you can see that now we actually have some memory usage happening on our GPUs. And we've distributed this load across two, all the GPUs in our system, which is two in this case, and we actually have three Python processes running. So it's pretty cool. If you have a lot of GPUs, um, this is a really, really handy way 
to take advantage of the entire system in just a couple lines of code. All I did here was read in the CSV and then actually process the abstract column since that's the one I wanted. Um, if you want to look at what abstract is here, it's just uh, it's going to be all the text abstracts. So you can see these are the first five abstracts. And if you do this at scale, of course, you can load in tons and tons of different data. Now, Dask is really powerful, but there's um, a lot more pandas-like functionality in the QDF library that's part of Rapids. Using simple Python code and just a single GPU, here we're going to do something similar to what we just did, but with more actual data cleaning. So we're going to read in every CSV in our data directory. We're going to lowercase all the strings in the abstract column, and we're also going to remove all of the punctuation. Now, this data cleaning operation could definitely be improved upon. I didn't write the best, most efficient code here, but this is a great example of how you can use QDF to kind of streamline your processing on GPU, stuff that you would normally be doing with pandas on your local machine or just any other CPU. So if I start this, it's going to read them in very, very quickly and process them also very quickly, much, much less than a second. It's worth noting here that I just took advantage you know, of an awesome accelerated GPU operation with a very, very simple code change. So if I replace QDF with pandas, I can go right back to using the same pandas operation and the same thing is going to happen. And we can see that you know it took a little bit longer to do, um, to do the pandas operation on the small, small set of abstracts. And as we scale our data out, those little incremental boosts in these processes on GPU are going to become huge, massive, massive time savers. So now that we actually have our data available within our system, it's time to move on to the information retrieval part of the, part of the process. For some context on how to approach this problem in a CPU-bound way, we can look at this basic class below that uses scikit-learn and pandas. Um, essentially, it allows you to read in textual data, train a small TF-IDF vectorizer, and then use cosine similarity on the vectors to find similar documents, essentially a straightforward search approach. Now, again, if you read the article, uh, you would find that I tried to convert this to the Rapids API by replacing pandas with QDF and scikit-learn with QML. Unfortunately, these methods here are not yet available in the QML library, but I will update this notebook when they do become available so that you can use the same class in a GPU accelerated manner. However, this is a good baseline for how to get started on the problem. So if I read this in, um, it's just going to define the class for me and we can move on to actually using it. Since the APIs aren't currently available, like I said, um, we can't train on GPU. Unfortunately, the training is still scikit-learn and therefore CPU bound. However, we can use other familiar libraries like TensorFlow that are optimized for the GPU to actually accelerate the inference itself. So this is a little hacky way that I found to train my TF-IDF vectorizer in the CPU, um, but then convert everything back to TensorFlow for the actual inference itself. So we can try a little test search here. I'm just going to use the word heart as an example, a very simple example for how this might work. But here, all we're doing is training a vectorizer um, and then using these functions that we've created to convert this back to TensorFlow so that it runs in the GPU in terms of our TF-IDF matrix. So this will take a second to run here. Awesome. And now for a quick sanity check, I'm going to do one CPU bound search on the term heart, and I'm going to do one using TensorFlow to see if we get the same result to make sure that our implementation of cosine similarity on both the CPU and GPU is the same. And awesome. We can see that we got the exact same first search result for the word heart uh, for the TF-IDF via scikit-learn that we did when we do the cosine similarity on the GPU itself. Now this is really, really cool. I mean, they both work and TensorFlow is highly optimized for GPU, so you can do a lot here. But of course, as you might have found by reading the article, the TF-IDF vectors don't really scale that well, especially on you know in a limited memory space. You get to basically vectors that become millions by millions, and that becomes a huge problem when you're trying to fit them in memory, even if they're sparse, sparse vectors. Fortunately for us, with the recent advances of NLP, we can represent text more contextually, but in far less dimensions. 
Whereas with TFIDF, you know, we have one spot in our vector for every single unique token or word that appears, which across all of PubMed is obviously millions and millions of unique words. Um, but however, if you use novel techniques like BERT and cool stuff like that, we can represent all of our texts more contextually in something like a thousand dimensions. So without further ado, let's move on to the GPU accelerated portion of this tutorial. Let's start by downloading BERT and unzipping it to our directory. So BERT's pretty big, so this is going to take a minute or two. Do a little fast forward for you here. Great. Now that we've downloaded the BERT model, we're ready to get started. One important step that you might want to take here, if you haven't been doing so, is to restart the notebook to clear the GPU memory. Um, as you can see, you know, we've been working with some data here and actually taking up a lot of space on one of our GPUs here. So right now it might be good practice just to restart the kernel to make sure that you're not um, you're not going to you know run out of memory very quickly here uh, just because you've been saving stuff. So here now we'll reset and we're ready to get started. So we're going to import some of the same libraries we've been using. One key library we're going to add to this is Facebook's FICE library, which is a fast index library. So basically this allows us to take vectors and create our own kind of indices um, that are far more well-engineered and functional than what I was doing just far with uh, you know, NumPy vectors and stuff like that. Uh, we're also going to use the BERT's, uh, BERT serving library, or BERT service library, that allows us to create a little client and server that will vectorize text for us so that we can basically rapidly vectorize all of the abstracts that we want in a GPU accelerated manner and then read them into our FICE index. So before I run this, I'm going to actually start the server itself. So if you go back up here, there's one more command that we need, and it's this one right here. This will start a BERT serving service uh, with, the, with the model dir flag that is just our current working directory and the folder that we saved BERT to along with the number of GPUs that we want to use. So what I'm going to do here is take Jupyter, open up a new terminal, and start the same service. So, great, need to cd into the proper directory. And I'm gonna start the service. This will take a second to get started in the background, but once it does, we can basically have this awesome service running and then start the client in Python to vectorize all of our textual data. Um, this BERT model that I've downloaded is the BERT large one, so it'll vectorize our text into 1,024 dimensions, which is obviously, obviously much, much better than the millions of dimensions that we originally had when we were working with TFIDF. Cool. I think this should be ready to go. So now we can go back and start our BERT client. Cool. Now we have the service running in the background. We can import our libraries and start a BERT client. Great. So now all you have to do is use FICE to actually create our GPU accelerated index. Um, the way to do this, as described in the FICE documentation, is to first create a CPU index and then convert it to its GPU counterpart. So here D, this refers to the size of the actual vectors that we're going to encode. So BERT, the model we're using, encodes text into 1024 dimensions. Um, and then we're just going to get the number of GPUs using a little FICE method here and create our GPU index. Perfect. Now finally, after all the touting of the GPU parallelization and acceleration and all that stuff, I'm going to write this really, really ugly looking for loop here. Um, again, probably better ways to do this as always, but, what, but we still get a really, really massive upgrade in speed here, um, just running this on the GPU. So the first thing we do is read in the data using QDF, as we saw earlier. Then we vectorize and index our text in two simple lines of code. One uses the BERT client to take the whole column and vectorize it. The second one, vect uh, second one adds those vectors to our GPU index. And then we can kind of get a check on how many objects we have in there in total and how much, you know, and the length of our text to ensure that we're, we're not running into issues there. And our index is the same size as our... Uh, as a, the length of the size of our documents. And then if desired, you can finally write this index to disk so you can reuse it again later for other kind of stuff. 
So I'm gonna run this. This is gonna start going. Over here in the background, you're gonna see the bird service start to work. So now it's getting a bunch of little batches of abstracts. It's vectorizing all of them um, pretty rapidly, I might add. This will take much, much, much longer if you try and do this locally. Um, by much, much longer, I mean like, you know, uh, exponential factors. And, you know, very, very quickly we've passed 7,703 abstracts through BERT, gotten the vectors for it, indexed them, and then saved that index to disk for later usage. So now that we've read our data in, vectorized it, and passed those vectors to our fast index, all that's left is to confirm and sanity check the results of our search. So let's start off by basically doing the same search we did earlier with the TFIDF vectors, just using the word heart on our corpus. And it looks like the results are not so good. The first one matches the phrase no abstract available. The second one is retrospective case analysis, which has nothing to do with the cardiovascular system. And the last one looks to be about rice, which is a grain. So we can see that initially just using the raw bird vectors didn't really yield great search results. One of the reasons why this could be is the fact that the vectors for the word heart or the contextual vector for the word heart is not really all that similar to some of the other, you know, the greater vectors of some of the cardiovascular related items in our corpus. If you want to make our search more contextual, then we might make our actual results more similar. So if I try this instead, the relationship between cardiac rate and failure, you can see my search results improve dramatically. So although I didn't mention anything about the heart itself, because I used the word cardiac, presumably, um, the model has a better idea of how similar these words are, and I get more results about uh, physical activity and resting heart rate, um, the original abstract we got, the relationship between prog prognosis heart rate remains unclear among patients diagnosed with heart failure. So we get a lot more similar results here. Uh, even the last one mentions the term cardiovascular. So I'll leave it up to you whether or not to decide that this is a you know better or worse search approach, but I would hope that you know with some fine tuning and maybe some other modeling behind the scenes here, that there can be a lot more done with uh, contextual searches in this regard. Cool, that's it for the video walkthrough. Thanks a lot for uh, following along and please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, and you can always follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter, not all that funny, cool, or active, but uh, would appreciate to chat about models, GPU compute, data science, um, MLOps, or anything else. Thanks a lot. I'll see you guys next time.